30 watts chargers from Basis GN Tech SI. I'm going to show you their output using my power meter charging a MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 chip. I understand it's not designed for the MacBook Pro because it will consume 140 watts, but it is doable. Let me show you their maximum output at 30 watts. Size comparison first. This is the original Apple 30 watts charger included by the iPad. The 30 watts from Basis, foldable plug, dual output. When both ports are used, the power is distributed among these two. The Type-C will get 18 watts and this one will get um, 12 watts. This is a more compact 30 watts charger with only one port. Okay, let's do some charging test. 30 watts, when it's plugged in, it shows a green indicator. It consumes zero watts or not even noticeable when plugged in. Okay, uh, the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Pro chip, 31 watts. Of course, there will be a little bit of conversion loss to the MacBook Pro, but at this point, I just maxed out the total consumption, right? So let's try the iPad. Uh, iPad will take a USB-C cable. Okay. 70% state of charge. Also around 30 watts. Okay, it's good to see the numbers, right? Instead of telling you, hey, it's a super fast charger. Uh, the numbers won't lie. Yeah, okay. 26 really depends on the state of charge of the device. The higher the battery percentage, the slower it will charge. It's just simple physics. Okay, let's try the iPhone. And then let's try that 30 watts with dual ports. iPhone 11. Yeah, the power will ramp up a little bit. I believe the um, iPhone 13 will take in 25 watts max. So this is already um, almost three times faster than the original five watts charger and it's so much more compact as a 30 watts charger. Let's try iPhone 12. So just FYI, 87%. So iPhone 12. Getting ready for the dual charger test. Yeah, it really takes a while for the iPhones to um, recognize the fast charger. Okay, yes, it's gonna be under 10 watts because it has a higher state of charge. I believe the result will be the same using a, a dual port. Yeah, let's go through this. Very interesting to see all these numbers. Yeah, next time I think I'll design a holder for this uh, power meter so I don't no longer have to hold it like this. Yes, around, yeah, okay. But I believe the charging characteristics will be the same when only one USB-C cable is used. Yeah, when charging the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the MagSafe, it's the 31 watts. Of course, this one also takes a USB-C cable. Yeah, for the iPad, I think it is gonna be exactly the same.
a USB type A. So if I'm gonna, okay, let's wait for a sec. 18 watts. If I, let's say if I plug in an, a, a different iPhone, like a iPhone 11, which is at 40, 54%, looks like it resets, then ramps up and distribute the power between these two. 20 watts. Interesting, I did not hit the full 30 watts charging power. Maybe it will take a while. And let's see if I wanna connect a, okay, now it's 25, doing better. Let's do, uh, let's connect the MacBook Pro again. So charging a, a fully maxed out device, like 30 watts, uh, theoretically, it will do 18 watts here and distribute um, at least 12 watts to the iPhone, right? That's the expected behavior. But it looks like I'm only getting 25 watts max, which means this is 18 watts and um, yeah, six watts or so to the iPhone. So it's not really uh, the eight watts expected. Yeah, maybe it's about the same, 18 watts. Uh, okay, 25 minus 18 is gonna be seven watts. Yeah, I think that's about right. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a uh, USB device here to, USB type C here to max out that 12 watts. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you find this review helpful. Um, yeah, a very compact travel charger with portable plugs. Way smaller than the Apple original one.